You're watching the Cowboys Report. I am Tom Downey. Before we get into the latest on the TJ Vasher hype train, Terrence Steele, and Deshaun Wright, an update on the like race here at Chat Sports, and not great. The Raiders report and that loser Mitchell Renz are kicking our butts by a pretty good margin with the month almost over. And now the Bears channel is gaining ground on us. So we need to get that corrected as soon as possible. Help me out. Like today's video right now. Let's get into the TJ Vasher hype, which I know at least some of you out there will appreciate quite a bit. ESPN, one of their articles, was naming an, a surprise offseason standout for each NFL team, and Todd Archer picked TJ Vasher for the Cowboys. He is in the middle of a fight for a roster spot after being an IR stash last year, but as we've talked about in OTA winners and losers and minicamp winners and losers, Vasher has impressed. Here's what Archer wrote. Signed as an undrafted free agent last year, Vasher did not practice because of a knee injury, but he has used this offseason to get himself into the receiver conversation with Michael Gallup working through knee rehab and CeeDee Lamb, James Washington, and Noah Brown missing time with minor injuries. Vasher got a lot of work in the OTAs and minicamp for the Cowboys. Dallas is in an interesting spot at wide receiver where we know CeeDee Lamb is going to be wide receiver one and at some point Gallup will be back as receiver two, maybe in sometime in September as Archer has previously reported. Jalen Tolbert should be a piece but he's a rookie. He might need some time. James Washington has been banged up. So as a result, knowing this team is going to carry anywhere from five to seven receivers, that leaves guys like Simi Fayoko, Noah Brown, and TJ Vasher fighting with guys like Dennis Houston, Ty Freifogel, etc. for those last roster spot or that last roster spot or two. What is noteworthy for Vasher is that his size was set at 6'5 by the Cowboys organization. He offers something a lot of the other receivers don't really have, and that is true size and height. He, by the way, was at, the, at his pro day was 6'5", 5'8", so the guy's almost 6'6". He's got great size despite being incredibly skinny with those, you know, I call them track runner legs, like they're just... They're just skinny. Here's what Mike McCarthy had to say on TJ Vasher. He's made some really big time flash plays, splash plays. He's had some really particularly in the red zone, which you can see his ability down there. Big plays and scramble drills and things like that. I just think like any young player, particularly in his, in his development, it's getting the details of the everyday situation. Kind of sounds like out of structure. He's been better than inside of structure, route running, that all kind of makes some sense there. Vasher does bring the red zone size this team doesn't really have, even at the tight end position. And back to 2018, it seemed like he was going to have, took a step forward from 2017, still had a bunch of touchdowns. The hype around Vasher in what was his third year, that year, 2018 in Texas Tech, was big time breakout years coming. He could be a pretty noteworthy draft pick. Well, that never materialized in, I think, large part due to poor quarterback play. I think the size-weight discrepancy, you're talking a 99th, 98th percentile height at receiver and average weight is a bit unusual, but that's just how he's built. I think red zone is how Vasher can make an impact, and of course, special teams always helps there. Now, we're not done talking about Vasher, but will he make the Cowboys roster at wide receiver this year? Pretty straightforward question. Pretty straightforward options. Y for yes, N for no. This question is going to be the pinned comment on today's video. So if the ad break comes on YouTube, take advantage of it. Head down there, type in Y for yes or N for no. I think Vasher is still a little bit on the outside looking in, but he is going to be and already is a popular pet cat, meaning the we've done this time and time again at the wide receiver spot in particular, right? Former UDFA, late round draft pick, makes some splashes. Everyone gets excited about him. Can go back to John Vay Johnson, for example. That was a classic camp hype player that didn't quite materialize. Hopefully, Vasher has a bit more success than John Vay ended up doing because he just couldn't catch in the end. But Vasher does face a fight for that roster spot. That's what camp and the preseason is for. That is certainly going to be a player in a position worth monitoring closely to see how it all plays out. I wonder if in the end, unless they can both impress significantly on special teams, if it comes down to TJ Vasher or Simi Fayoko, the fifth round pick, who also offers some pretty good size at 6'4", 218. He's bigger, 
but shorter than Vasher is. If Noah Brown makes it as that special team guy, then it's a little bit trickier for Fayoko to find his way. Otherwise, there is room for both guys, since we know how important of a core special teamer Noah Brown is, despite sticking around and not being that productive of the, on the offensive side. And what also impacts this here is what the designation is for Gallup. Does he go on the pup week? Four weeks minimum now, not six. Might be more plausible for Dallas, but if he's on the roster... And even though he's hurt, that's going to require some, you know, decisions to be made at wide receiver. Now, we've got a fantastic deal for you guys over at Fanatics. The Chatsport, or the, the Cowboys, excuse me, t-shirt combo pack is available at chatsports.com slash Cowboys combo. Got ahead of, my, ahead of myself there. Both t-shirts, a combined 30 Dollars. You have a difficult time finding any officially licensed NFL gear for $30 individually. Now they're both there for 30 bucks. So head over, we'll put the link in the comments section and the description. It's chatsports.com slash Cowboys Combo. Let's talk about Terrence Steele now. And after having a bit of a breakout year last year, is it time to potentially pay him already? Blog and the boys suggested the Cowboys try to pay Steele right now instead of waiting. Now, as in a former undrafted free agent, unlike players under their normal rookie scale contracts, Steele actually is eligible for an extension. He can go a little bit earlier than the other players are allowed to uh, in that context, which I think is significant from that standpoint. It allows the Cowboys to pay him if they choose to do so. He took the big step forward last year. We've talked about him a lot as a potential breakout candidate this year season so that makes it a little tricky after that standpoint now as a udfa he is allowed to renegotiate after the first two years of his deal that has passed he's been incredibly cheap this has been one of the best values on the entire cowboys roster you're paying less than vet minimum for a guy that has started games for you in each of the past two years if Steele does not sign a new contract next year he would be a restricted free agent. So there is a difference on that standpoint. 2024, he would then be a unrestricted free agent. A player, by the way, with only three accrued seasons is an RFA. That is exactly what Terrence Steele would be. So 2023, talking three, four, five million bucks. That's pretty cheap. So there is not a rush to pay Terrence Steele. But if you are convinced and you know he's the guy, it does save you money in the end. So we'll look at some of the pros and cons here. But would you extend Terrence Steele right now if you were the Cowboys? Type P for pay or type W for wait. What would you rather do with the Cowboys starting right tackle? Now, as we should all know by now, the longer you wait to pay a player, the more expensive it is if, of course, they are key players for you. And they're good. Here's the question mark. Is Terrence Steele good enough? Do you trust him? We can look at the tight end position and see the pros and cons of paying a player early. If the Cowboys had paid Dalton Schultz this time last year, they'd have been saving millions of dollars. But they also paid Blake Jarwin early. And that did not work out for them in the end because Jarwin was never healthy. So it is a double-edged sword, and it really comes down to being good at self-scouting. If you are not good at identifying who's actually a good football player on your team, you're going to end up in trouble. Now, the most promising stuff I've noticed of Terrence Steele is this. A, he got better in 2021 compared to 2020. Sacks went down on almost identical snap counts. There's 60 more, but not enough to make a major difference there. Sacks went down. Hits stayed flat. Hurries went way down. He was a better run blocker. More penalties. That's a problem. Make no mistake about it. But he went from being a not-so-great tackle to being at least a low-end player. And even within the 2020 campaign, you will notice this. He was better on the right side of the offensive line in the regular season than what he was on the left side. That is also significant. I mean, no sacks allowed on the right side. Hits dropped on more snaps and hurry, stay flat. He was a better run blocker. Steele is clearly more comfortable as a right tackle than he is left tackle, which is where he's going to play. The question then is, okay, how much is this going to cost? And the right tackle market is unique. Ryan Ramchek's the highest paid player, $19.2 million. Braden Smith's up there in the top five. Then there's a pretty big drop-off. Um, 
after Braden Smith. There's a couple guys around the $16 million range. Lane Johnson's new is due for a new deal. Then Chuck Sakura for we just got paid last year, and I don't think is that great, is getting $9.75 million. Lyle Collins got seven from the Bengals, but you know there's hip injury concerns there. Trent Brown got 5.75. So a pretty wide range of just how much would Terrence Steele cost? Unlike most players in terms of like the timing of everything, you're paying Terrence Steele early. That will save you money because he's getting more money right now as opposed to waiting and waiting on a new deal, unlike, say, someone who's about to actually hit unrestricted free agency. So if you pay Terrence Steele, I would guess, and this is a big-time guess more than all my other contract projections, $7 million, I think, would get it done on a per-year basis. Now, if the Cowboys do pay Terrence Steele, which I doubt is going to happen so early, you know that we'll break it down, both the breaking news and an in-depth look at the contract. So get more Cowboys videos by subscribing. We are 499 subs away from the 130,000 mark. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. If you want free Cowboys videos, all you have to do is subscribe right now. Let's move to Nashawn Wright. Is he on the roster level? I'm kind of surprised by this one. Uh, the Athletic put Wright in a roster battle at the cornerback spot. They kept five corners. They cut Deron Bland and John uh, Machado's projections as Wright did not play much in 2021, but was a third-round pick for a team that historically gives draft picks every chance, sometimes more of them, uh, more draft picks chances than you maybe normally allow because they were high investments. Here's what my boy John wrote. Wright will likely battle for the fifth and final spot at corner with fifth round pick Deron Bland, undrafted rookies Isaac Taylor Stewart, Quandre Mosley, and veteran Kyron Brown. Now, I think Brown's not going to make it. Mosley, I think, is a practice squad guy. I like Taylor Stewart, but not over Bland and Wright. So if this is accurate, pick one of these two guys to keep. Type NW for Nashawn Wright or type in DB for Deron Bland. If you have to only pick one, who would it be? Let me know in the comments section. I myself would be a bit surprised if the Cowboys already cut Nashawn Wright. It's a third round pick. This team gives a lot of chances to draft picks and for good reason. Those guys were highly invested in. So if the Cowboys only keep five, I'd probably say that Nashawn Wright is the fifth. Now, I would not be surprised if the Cowboys went deep at cornerback again or they find a IR stash like they did for Reggie Robinson for a year before they cut him because C.J. Goodwin is going to be a core special teamer most likely. Wright played a lot on special teams. To move on from a third-round pick already would be an indictment of how bad he's been in practices because – you don't dump a third-round pick that early in the vast majority of cases. But Wright also did not play very much last year behind a very good cornerback crop that still includes Diggs and Brown and Lewis and potentially suspended, I suppose, Nashawn Wright uh, as well. So I, I would bet that Wright ends up making the roster. He had one start last year. Looks fine against the Philadelphia Eagles, you know, backup options in the end. If you guys ever want to talk about the Cowboys, my DMs are open on Twitter, so feel free to hit me up at WhatGoingDowny.